This is Opal. She is a 2007 Chrysler Town & Country, almost the exact same model as a Dodge Caravan, and she has brought us to some amazing places. While living in a minivan, things can get out of place and a little messy, so it is great to have a spot to pull everything out and repack her. While we have everything out, we wanted to share what we have with us and how we pack things away in such a small space. So before we get into it, hit that subscribe button and follow our journey. Welcome to the Adventure Closet. I'm Liz and this is Charlie. We are two 80s and 90s kids that never lost their sense of wonder. We're all over the map, exploring wild and abandoned places, discovering rocks, geology, and history of different areas, all while living and traveling in our minivan Opal. I guess you can say our life is a mixtape of adventures. So hop in the van, hit the subscribe button, and let's go somewhere. This is our basement. Uh, these were where the stow and go seats are. This We still have a seat in there. Um, we'll eventually take that one out for more storage, but this gives us quite a bit of storage in here. This is where we put stuff that we don't use very often. Uh, our helmets, extra sleeping bag, some of the tools, but we call this our basement. Figured we'd do a little show and tell while the van is unloaded. So let's see what we put in here. sleeping bag, emergency propane tank in case our big tank uh, gets empty, toe strap, our winter chains, and a safety vest down here. And my axe. And my axe. Also got uh, my contracts for doing portrait photography, model releases and such, property releases. And, uh, cause I haven't been doing much of that. And the M50, which we actually haven't used much. And then just in case something gets spilled, we cover all of it with a garbage bag. Just to be safe, you know, a little extra protection. I know water will go all the way to the bottom and soak it from the bottom, but this will just be a little bit of protection for it. And then we close her up. Also uh, a good place for security, in case you need to store any valuables, you can put them in there. But we use our valuables too often. <laughs> so unfortunately we can't secure them in here. But yeah, that's the basement. This is our bed platform. These actually are just braces that go underneath here. And then that one goes in the back. Uh, we used single sheet of plywood. Uh, we cut it to Oh, we didn't even cut it. It's four foot. Perfect. Okay. And then we did a 20, about 25 and a half, 25 and 25 and a half. So 25 and a half, 25, 25 and a half. We used a piano hinge so that we could open the back to access uh, our pantry, which I'll show you. And uh, this piece we did uh, separate so we could flip it over, put it on top for a couch mode, which we found we've never really used. But we do have to use, flip it up into couch mode to get the other seat up in there to use the other seat. So 
Um, pretty simple. Did uh, two by fours for the rest of it and uh, two by twos, or one two by two in the back. Um, just did raw. Four foot across. So one four foot there, another one on the other side, and one foot four foot below. And then we did about six inches. Yeah, about six inches for these. And then we actually had to uh, put a little riser here on the bottom because of the slope in the van. And we just did a little five inch section there. So that's the back. And then a little two by two right there. Uh, the bungees are to hold other things together uh, in. Um, this folds flat when there's nothing on it. Um, but we usually just prop this up with our shovel like this because it, it doesn't fold flat when the mattress is on it. And for the front piece, we did 20, 25 and a half. And uh, this piece we did too long, so we're actually gonna have to cut this piece. This is 28 and a half. But we probably, because it fits right under here in the van, so there's no gap. And uh, it kind of leaves a gap. So we probably need to cut about an inch off of that or something. As for the front high risers, about eight and three quarters. And the very front one looks like it's nine because again, there's a slope in the van. And I'll show you what it looks like in couch mode. So this is couch mode. Uh, I just flipped it. I actually had to 360 it and then flip it over. This is actually the foot of the bed. Um, basically just cut pretty much same size as this plus the inch and three quarters for the foot. Put a two by four to brace it across there. We got another foot that kind of goes in the middle between the two sections and another foot that goes right here. This is held by the two by two. This is held by the two by two supported because our heads aren't as heavy as the rest of our bodies. And we cut these at kind of an angle because the van kind of tapers in and it makes a great handle because sometimes this is hard to pick up. But that is our bed platform. Uh, quite nice. Um, no complaints. Um, so we've slept several months on it so far and uh, I don't think I'd change it. Uh, one of the reasons we made it as high as we did is because we wanted the jackery to be able to sit underneath it. Um, that was one of our prerequisites for the height because we needed a place to store the jackery. And uh, the uh, pressure cooker, the Instapot actually fits underneath it right next to it too. So it's quite nice, uh, perfect height. Only gripe I have about the height is I cannot sit up in the van all the way without kinking my neck sideways, it sucks. But other than that, it's, it's perfect. So we have this mat here, which goes right here. And uh, the boards sit on this and this kind of keeps a lot of the dirt off the, um, the rug. I mean, we do still have kind of a gap here, but uh, I mean, you do the best you can. And then the back just slides in like this.
So that's the back end of it. And we, uh, we made the back come right up to here so that it wouldn't slide around as much. And then we had this load, load to this line thing so the hatch can close. And our four foot table fits perfectly right here. We'll show you that later. So uh, the block's just kind of set in here like so. Just enough to give it a little extra support. We got one in the front. And now for the front. And as you can see, it fits under here. Um, and there is a little gap, but the mattress is thick enough so we don't even feel that. Um, in hindsight, we would take off probably about a quarter inch here and that way it would sit flush. And then we have this block here that uh, holds up the front. And, and then we have the pantry area which we hold up with our shovel. Yeah, we've held it up with other things, but... The shovel just kind of fits. The sh yeah, it does. There's like a little groove in the wood and... And it just holds it up perfectly and... Yeah, it's kind of nice. This is where we store the kitchen and the pantry. Um, the pantry is a tub. The kitchen is a stove and a propane tank which you'll see in a minute. So we've also put bungees on the sides to uh, hold in other items like our excess amount of toilet paper hoarding <laughs> due to the pandemic. Just kidding. <laughs> this is like the smallest uh, package of toilet paper we could find. Um, <laughs> we couldn't find a little four pack or anything. It had to be a six pack. So it seems a little excessive, but it's not. And then over here, so this is where we store the fuel for our jet boil, um, which uh, is how we make our coffee in the morning. So that's why we have a lot of fuel. We actually started with this thing entirely full of fuel. <laughs> but we drink coffee every day, so that's the thing. So under the back here, uh, we have Liz's uh, backpacking bag with the, it's fully loaded with uh, backpacking gear. Uh, we will link a video below uh, explaining what camp, what backpacking gear we take on a backpacking trip. Over here is my uh, extra stuff bag for, with another separate drone, um, bunch of wires, bunch of charging stuff, uh, all that stuff in here. Um, and then little things can be put in this little section here on, e on either side. I think we keep our water shoes on that side. And I keep an uh, emergency spare GoPro over here. And um, yeah. And over here, keep our first aid kit and our fire extinguisher. First aid kit and the fire extinguisher. And this is more of a Washington thing. Um, but if we're going down a mountain road and we have to cut a, a like tree out of the way or something, we'll have this saw here just in case. And actually, uh, before we did this rearrange, I kept the, the chains here, but there's really no need to keep the chains right here. And then this actually, this stuff acts as a shelf and I put my little, my CPAP right here um, for my sleep apnea when I sleep at night. But we have to move it all the time because I don't want to break it lifting up this, this thing. So, one of the many things we have to move on a daily basis. And Liz's hammock is right there. 
when we flip this up into couch mode, we have to have the mattress folded up on top of it, uh, itself like this. Um, because the way it folds, it doesn't fold in and then in. Um, it kind of folds. So yeah, it would be upside down if, if, if it was able to fold up correctly this way. But then it wouldn't fold up easy in the back to, uh, to lift up the back. So we kind of have to fold it all the way up and flip it around. And then this has to flip backwards and upside down. So it's kind of a, not the greatest design, but it works for having to use the extra seat there. So um, if the mattress was designed a little different, it would be cool if, if it folded up kind of in the middle, that would work better. And the mattress we're using is just this bamboo um, tri-fold double bed mattress. It's like three inch of memory foam. Surprisingly, it's very comfortable for being about a hundred bucks and it fits nicely. Uh, just kind of have to squeeze it in around the, the sides and uh, yeah. And this is our portable tent for uh, changing and using the restroom. Uh, it's a nice little shower tent. Um, it kind of sucks if it's windy because you got to hold it down or stake it down. But this is what we use for uh, a bathroom tent. And you hope that doesn't happen in the bathroom. <laughs> and then that just folds up nicely and we just store it right underneath the bed here and it kind of flattens itself out when we're sleeping. And now the pantry and kitchen. This is our pantry. It's got all our canned foods and foods and extra stuff in here. This is uh, where we keep all our spices and utensils and uh, knife sharpener because our knives were dull. Kind of handy in this little toolbox. And this is our bread box, onion box, fruit box. It's right on there. Um, and then we have water that fits right in here. And then the shovel just fits right here. Oh yeah, and we have an oven. Right there? Uh, no, we'll put it back where it was. Okay. Our oven fits right over here. And that's a Coleman oven. I usually keep the knob uh, the other direction so it doesn't break. Like that? Yeah. Yeah, so oven, propane, these are just our bowls for salad and such. Bread box, spices, stove and pantry. Need something to keep that from being so loud sometimes. While we're driving and each night we store the reflectix, or each day, we store the reflectix under the mattress here just as a way to keep it all together in one place, which is handy. And Liz has a yoga mat that we share um, that just sits right there. We put water bottles here um, when we have them, but we did just get a pump for a five gallon thing. So hopefully we'll have some room here. 
Um, we may have to put the five gallon here if it fits or here. We'll have to figure that one out. I have this uh, comforter here for a little extra warmth and uh, insulation. And uh, this bag is, has our, our sleeping bags in it. Uh, I have a Western Mountaineering and Liz has a Z-Pax uh, classic bag. There are backpacking bags, but they work very well for keeping us warm. We've had a few uh, nights in the 20s and uh, we've done pretty well for, uh, for how cold it's been. Well, it doesn't fall out when we open it. Yeah, <laughs> it, we had the problem. So originally we didn't realize that it fit across here like this. We actually were putting it on the dash. It actually fits on the dashboard. That's how big the dashboard is in this thing. Um, but uh, we realized that, hey, it just, it fits perfectly right here. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, at night it keeps our pillows from falling down in the gap. Yep, and it's one, a four foot table you can get at like Home Depot. For bathroom, we have the Lego Baloo, which is just a little toilet. And we just keep straps and ropes in there. Um, because it's a good place to store stuff. And I just keep it closed with a couple rubber bands. This store's in the attic, which I'll be showing you pretty soon. This is our attic. It's a Thule um, Force XL uh cargo top carrier and surprisingly big you can fit a lot of stuff in here it's kind of dirty because uh the chairs when we put the chairs in here they kind of bring dirt in but uh yeah a lot of room in this thing and i'll show you what we put in here Two 100 watt Jackery solar panels. Our luggable loo. Yes, a five gallon bucket can fit nicely up here. Our 10 by 10 instant greenhouse, which hopefully I'll be replacing with a 10 by 10 canopy with, with a greenhouse attachment because this doesn't give you a lot of sun protection. Um, Got some pretty bad sunburn on my ears from sitting in here doing the editing. <laughs> but uh, keeps the bugs away. Actually, it's kind of more like a bug collector. If you leave the doors open, like for a little bit, it like, it, it seems to attract all the bugs. It's weird. It's just, it does exactly what it's designed not to do. <laughs> Our eight by 10 tarp, which we haven't needed to use yet which hopefully we don't have need to use anytime soon. Um, but I figure if we have it, it's not gonna rain on us. <laughs> Small toolkit, uh, air pump with tire repair kit uh, and extra oil, just in case. Our entire rock anding kit with classifiers, hammers, chisels, shovels yeah everything you need for rock hanging on the road our stack of levelers for when we're parked on a slope because when you're in a full-size bed you don't want to be rolling into the other person all night <laughs> my full-size tripod fits here i have a smaller one that i use as well but uh this is good for night shots and such when you need a really sturdy tripod. And Liz's day pack, uh, her fishing pack, her hiking poles, her hiking umbrella, uh, bug spray and such. We keep it in a plastic bag because we've heard rumors that these toolies get water in them during heavy rains, but we haven't experienced that yet. But that's a just in case thing. And Two foldy chairs, which I uh, probably have to do this. 
to get it to close. But two foldy chairs. Um, we're gonna be replacing these with better chairs because they're not the greatest chairs. These are just cheap old Walmart chairs. Also keep a hundred foot extension cord up in the attic. Um, comes in handy because sometimes the sun is not where you want to be working. So you got to put the, uh, the solar panels in the sun and then run an extension cord to do some work. And that's everything that fits in the attic. Um, I hope. Hope I don't have to open that thing again until I pull the chairs out. Mainly we get in there for the solar panels and the chairs. Everything else is just stuff that we just have just in case. Well, that was fun. That was so much fun. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe and check us out on Patreon and we'll see you next time. Bye now. Bye now.